And God, I thank you that we get to have communion, but yet, God, not in an unworthy manner. So we all touch and agree, say, forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Forgive us, God, for the things that we have done unlike you. Wash us. We plead the blood of Jesus, O oh God, upon our lives. Wash us. We declare and decree that there's none like you, Jesus. So wash us. We put it all on the table and we unleash, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, the pride, the unforgiveness, the shame, the shackles. Wash us. God, we say thank you, God, that we know there's none like you. We can say thank you, God, that the enemy does not have us. He cannot have us. He has no hold on us because the blood of Jesus has washed us. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah to the Lamb. He has risen and he has risen in me. We give you our best praise. We give you a hand clap of gratitude. In Jesus' name, let God be say amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, thank you. Oh my God, we love you, Jesus. We got a few announcements this morning with us. And I'm going to... Uh, one, I want you all to do a save a date, if you don't mind. Save a date. Come on, get your calendars out. July 23rd, Rock Church is going to be having a picnic and a church service outside. Come on, somebody. We're going to have a picnic. We're going to have a church service, man. I'm going to try to preach everybody to our tent. Come on, somebody. Please mark the date, July the 23rd. We're going to celebrate that day. We're going to be outside, man, and... Uh, we got more information that's going to be coming, but we want to encourage each and every one of you to uh, make sure that you're ready, man. Put on your calendar, man. Tell your friends we're going to have so much fun being outside. Uh, also, I want to uh, bring up Sister Bridget. She has an announcement for the women's ministry. Come on now. Come on, let us raise our hands and clap our hands and we thank God for our first lady as we come. announcements um, and it is for the first one is about Mother's Day we are going to get together um, and celebrate and have some fun together all of us moms here in the church we're going to have a Mother's Day tea and it's going to be Saturday May 6th it's going to be right here at the church it's going to be from 3 to 5 the information we should have um, these are on the table in the foyer the information is on here um, and it's no charge. It's um, dollar sign free. So everybody come. Um, there is going to be a sign up sheet in the foyer. And we do need everyone to sign up because we do have a limited amount of seating arrangements that we have. So please sign up to come. You can invite guests. Um, we're asking for no more than two guests, again, to make sure we have enough space and food for everybody. And we are asking no children, please. It's the time for the moms to come, lay down their hair, and not have to worry about the babies, okay? If you have an infant, bring, bring your infant, but uh, kindly, no children, um, and come ready to have a good time. On Mother's Day, that Sunday, um, also on this sheet, I'm asking all the ladies to sport your hats, okay? So wear your hats, and then everyone, um, men and women, bring a picture of you with your mom. Whether it's your mom or whomever was that mother figure in your lives, we ask you to bring a framed picture, um, and we are going to have a special tribute to all of our moms and those who were mother figures in our lives. So bring the pictures uh, starting next Sunday all the way up to May 7th. And if you can give those to me, um, and if you can please have the picture framed. And no 
bigger than an eight by 10. You know, big like poster size pictures or taking up the whole screen or stage. Just eight by 10 or smaller. And if you don't have a frame, let me know and I'll help you out with that. But again, um, on Sundays, please bring your picture of yourself and your mom in a frame and give it to me. Um, and that's all I have. So thank you. Thank you. It's hard to get Sister Bridget up here with that mic, y'all, boy. Praise God. Love to see her up here. The woman of God got a powerful word, guys. One day we're going to get up here to encourage us with the word of God one Sunday. Come on, y'all, give her a big hand. We're going to get her up here one of these Sundays. Y'all have no idea she has a powerful word. Come on, somebody. Being married to me 26 years will give you a powerful word. Come on now. Listen, so today is also our international day. Amen. Come on now. International day. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this international gear on. So I would like for you all to stand up. You represent your heritage. Come on, stand up. Let us see you. Come on now, stand up. Come on, let's see. Come on now, stand on up. Hey, hey, Medicine Sheila, come on, tell them. Give them the microphone so we can tell us. All right, keep standing, keep standing. Medicine Sheila gonna come around real quick. All right, it's on. Hear me? Hey, okay. All right. Well, I have on my shirt representing the Indian heritage in my family. We have Chickasaw and Cherokee. Amen. On my mother and my father's side. So you gonna tell us what your outfit and your heritage? Hi, I'm representing Mexico. Amen. Wow. Mexico. Mexico. So I like to say that my family is a melting pot because we have some uh, German, some Swedish, some uh, Irish, and some Welsh. Um, so I have a free dress for my parents. Amen. All right. We got a melting pot here. Just a few years in Afghanistan, I was a free woman. I never saw a woman's face the whole time I was there unless they came to our house because you're never allowed to let a man see your face once you come of age. Women are now returning to this in Afghanistan because of the Taliban. But we really need to pray for Afghanistan. Mm. Amen. Amen. Wow. I'm representing Kenya. We have folks representing Kenya, Afghanistan, Mexico, Ireland. Mm. Represent Nigeria? Wow. I'm representing my grandfather who was a child. Amen. 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 I'm representing. I'm representing my native um, heritage, which is Nigeria and Congo. Amen. Wow. Wow. Oh, my, uh, my niece did a family tree on mine. And so we're from Nigeria. And um, there's another one. I can't remember what it is. And I'm 90, so don't, don't forget me. That's all right. Amen. Nigeria, amen. All right. We got a couple more representing. It's exciting. I'm representing my nation, Nigeria, 
Ibo Pray, pray for us. Taliban is struggling a lot after we are adopted. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And my name is Vanessa. I'm representing Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right, got a couple more. Come on, got a couple more. All right. Good morning. I'm representing an African American as well as being uh, uh, the uh, Sioux Nation. Amen. Sioux Nation. All right. Like most African Americans here, we are all healthy positive. Several, several benefits. But I am representing God today and now here. Amen. Praise God. We got two more. Oh, take your time, Minister. Two more. She running in heels, y'all. Take your time. Good morning. I'm representing Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm wearing an outfit that one of the many that my mother made for me. And I'm representing, I didn't do the background. So I'm representing the country of Mississippi. Come on now. <laughs> Praise God. Oh my gracious. Amen. 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 That's so good to uh, have the fellowship our international day. For some of you all who are listening to us, you are live streaming. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I wish you all was, I wish you all was here to see uh, the many um, uh, outfits they're wearing and just, uh, it's, it's amazing because afterwards we're going to have some food and fellowship and uh, some of them made dishes from uh, the homeland. And so I'm looking forward to some of those dishes and I'm representing you all in Chicago. Come on, somebody. Somebody got to represent Chicago. I'm representing Chicago in the Austin community. That's right. I'm right here. Now, listen, I got one more announcement, and then I'm going to let you all go. I would like all the males to stand up if you're in seventh grade and above. Seventh grade and above in all men. Please stand. Now, I'm going to ask that all the men, seventh grade and above, come forward real quick. Come forward real quick, please. Come on, come forward real quick. I want you guys to come forward real quick. Come on, come on. Yeah, real quick. Yes. Amen. For those of you all watching, these brothers are coming down. We got youth here, they're coming down. Yes, they're coming down. Oh my God. These men are coming down. Look at these men in here. Look at these young men in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's exciting, exciting to have you all down with me right now. Listen, man, uh, as I was out on my sabbatical asking God, what is it that we're doing, what I need to do in preparation of moving forward? And as he was just, I just waiting on, just waiting on him to speak to me in various ways, in various things that he's given me. God gave me a revelation was inspired by my elders meeting last night, yesterday. And uh, some of the things that we do, we have breakfast together as elders. Uh, Elder Reggie has led us in that, in that way. And it's been great because the restaurants we have been to, you know, acknowledge see us praying and they just they got something to say when they see men bowing their head in public and pray that's powerful it's a powerful expression and and it don't take long for the holy spirit to inspire me y'all early this morning i can't tell you could have been about 3 30 quarter to four this morning holy spirit put it into my spirit to start a new ministry here at this church a new ministry that's going to cause I believe a revival in men and young men. As you see these young men, these older men standing around this altar right now, as I'm standing with you, we're gonna start a new ministry, men and youth, breakfast for champions. 
Come on, somebody. I'm looking at champions. Reference to champions. Now, 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 God's going to give me something. He's going to show me how to do it, too, now. Okay. He's going to give me a word behind everything he showed me. See, Saul was a killer. He wasn't no joke. Come on, somebody. God came in and changed this man's whole outlook. He went from Saul to Paul. There's some Saul's I'm looking at right now. And I'm not talking about you killing somebody physically, but maybe you're killing somebody in different ways. Their spirit, their personality, their character. Maybe you felt like you're dying inside. Maybe you have done some things yourself you're not even proud of. Maybe you got some things that's going on in your life. You said, I wish I could, could or should have, but you didn't. So therefore, the enemy has a way to beat us up since we, since we have failures. But I'm here to tell you because God is in control. He loves us and we got plenty. Now, Jesus started with 12. We got more than 12 up here. Come on, somebody. Philippians 3.13 says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, come on somebody, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. It is time for us to forget about what we've done in the past and start striving and thriving for the future. Come on somebody. Now I know that oftentimes when we say men's ministry, it's just men. God gave me a revelation. said, no, 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 not only is men, it's going to be men and youth. See, we're going to kill two birds with one by four or five stones. See, these young youth that stand up before us today, they're going to they gonna have to see what men of God really looks like. We're going to have to give them an image what men of God does. Okay, we have to give them an image what men of God willing to do against all adversity. We got to give them an image, those who are husbands, how to be husbands to their wives. We're going to give them an image how to give, hey, responsibility for their families. We're going to give them an image that's going to help them. You see? What I realize is this. With a group this large, we can start a revival. We can bring other men into the fold. See, I believe us men can also mentor these young men. Come on, somebody. They need mentors as well. It takes a village to raise a village of men. And these men that I'm looking at right now, I got a, I got a, a relationship with each and every one of you all. That it's time for us to lift up and raise up each other. We're going to do this next Saturday. We're going to have breakfast with champions every single month on the first Saturday of the month. Say, Pastor Rob, why the first Saturday? Because we're going to get ahead of Satan. Come on, somebody. Oh, we're going to get ahead of Satan. Every month we're going to be equipped, ready to go. He ain't going to be able to get, hey, listen, he can't get to you once you've been with your brothers. So our initial meeting is going to be this Saturday from 9 to 11. We're going to feed you. We're going to have a breakfast that's going to be laid out for you. We're going to have a word that's going to be laid out for you. We're going to have a calendar that's going to be laid out for you. I'm going to have people that come inspire us, to talk to us, to keep encouraging us. I got to prepare you men for the future. We're going to be out on the streets May the 3rd. I got to prepare you all to be the men of God that God had intended for us to be. It's been a thing that men have laid down and played the silent treatment. We have, we have written off the accountability that we need. We have signed a silent contract with Satan and said, don't nobody need to know my business. But guess what? Champions going to be champions. Champions going to pray together. Champions going to bake bread together. Champions going to cry together. Champions going to worship together. Champions going to call another man to be a champion. Amen. Amen. Come on. Gonna win together. And we going to win together. Hey!
I want to see y'all this Saturday. We're going to start it this Saturday. And every month, we're going to meet together. I know some of you all say, oh my God, because when he starts something, he ain't going to stop. He got it right. God is ready to raise us up, man, to lead this church, to lead our families, to lead our communities. There's no judgment, but we need to hold each other accountable as we continue to help each other grow in Christ. And there are other men out here. Lastly, brothers and sisters, this week we had in the 80s and 79 degree, degree weather. Y'all saw what was outside. Come on, somebody. Don't act like y'all ain't see it. I saw it. I'm going to equip you all how to be able to minister in a way that's going to be very pure for all of us. God's blessings on you. I hope to see you this Saturday because you are a man which are a champion in Christ. God's bless us, son. God bless you. Thank you so much. Right here, we're going to meet right here Saturday morning, this Saturday. God's bless us, son. Amen, brothers and sisters. I want to invite all you all who are listening. You've got sons and grandkids, seventh grade and above. they got to be seventh grade and above to be a part of this so I want you to invite them. Tell them, man, we're gonna we're gonna we start this ministry today. Breakfast for champions. I need y'all support, sisters. I need your prayers. Amen. Jesus did it for us. He did it on the cross for us. He's interceding right now, and that's why we're able to have communion. You know, as we prepare ourselves, I want you to get your cup ready now. As we partake communion together. <laughs> wow. Say, God, what are you doing? You say, I'm loving you. I'm loving these men. Men are going to raise up, become men of prayer, men of the word, men who will listen to the Holy Spirit, who's willing to lean on the commands of the Spirit, that men will find their strength in them. Well, that could not even happen. If Jesus never rose from the grave. Brothers and sisters, I want you to stand with me now as we have our time of communion. I want to tell you what this bread represents. Your cup, I want you to raise your hand if you don't have a communion cup yet. If you don't have one, we'll give you one. This bread that we're going to eat, it represents the body that was broken on Calvary's cross, Jesus. You know what's really cool about Jesus? He's willing to take on broken people. Yeah. He's willing to take on broken relationships. You may feel broken right now inside. He want to take that on for you. And he has. This juice represents the blood that was spilled on Calvary's cross. Spilled out. And he's still representing us right now. So I want to encourage you, don't walk in shame. Walk in gratitude. Because he's giving you a new day in the day to do things the right way, his way. We give him praise for that. So the Bible says, as we take the bread out, he says, For well, I received from the Lord where I passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed. He took this bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it. He says, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you right now for the body that was broken for us. Now we take this bread, and we thank you, God, that you take broken people you make them whole again. We take this bread out of the ground. What you eat, and eat all of it. As a reminder of taking this blood, this cup, this juice that represents the blood 
you know, you, 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 you have to be very careful how you open up this cup, right? You just don't open it up. You got to be careful when you're spilling. And then you, you, you embrace it and you hold it and you pull it back. God does that with us every single day. He's careful with us. He's careful with us. He wants you to know that you are, you are covered because of the grace and mercy. But in that covering, he's saying, I'm enough. I am enough no matter what. Yeah. We don't get to spill that grace and mercy all over the place. We take it, we receive it, we honor it, and then we give him thanks. The Bible says, in the same way after supper, they took this cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. You do this in remembrance of me. What you drink and drink all of it. And as a reminder, it says, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. You ought to say amen. amen. Thank you, God. We get to proclaim his death until he comes. You can pass your cup in at this time. Our youth ministry, you are now this first for the time of getting God's word and our children's church. You are now able to go to your ministry. Give God a hand of praise for our ministry. Thank you all for serving. Hallelujah. Without prayer, you may take your seats now. As we get into God's word this morning, get your Bibles ready. Man, I'm so filled up already, y'all. <laughs> I'm for real, man. I feel good. Y'all, worship was so good, man. Thank you all for bringing us to worship. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Lydia, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, watch this. I'm getting there. I can do a little jump. Just a little. I'm getting there. I'm not already strong. I'm not as strong as I want to be, but I'm getting there. So no stumps, don't go jump so much all the time. That make me want to jump. Man. <laughs> I'm getting there, y'all. Uh, I had my six month evaluation on my health, and be praying for me because they 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 want the bone to fuse all the way. It has not fused all the way. It's, they say it takes about eight months to a year to fuse all the way. But I need to get some more calcium in me so that just be praying for me that my bone fuses all the way. And I'm saying, is there anything I need to be doing or not doing? So keep doing what you're doing. So I'm having a good time swimming. I'm having a good time playing some golf. I'm having a good time, man, you know, uh, working out a little bit. So uh, I still can't run yet, but I can stop a little bit. Come on, somebody. It's getting there. So we thank God for your prayers. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, for some of you all who are just... Uh, Join us today. I want to uh, tell you thank you all for coming out this morning, being with us and celebrating. Thank you all for following us right now live. We appreciate what you're doing and how you continue to encourage us. Uh, we are, wow, believe it or not, guys, this is our last day in our study series in the book of Ephesians. Yeah, yeah, right. We started... The book of Ephesians, I've been teaching out of one book for almost two years. We started January 6, 2021. That's when we started the book of Ephesians. And uh, I remember one of my pastor's accountability brothers says, man, how are you going to pull that off? I said, it's the word of God. <laughs> man, I ain't nothing to pull off. I'm going to rightly divide it. We're going to teach it. So we've actually went through the whole Bible of the book of Ephesians. Ain't that something? So today, uh, we are on our last couple of verses. It is more blessed to give than receive. We're on part 219. 219. 
right? So as we get into this word, I want you to think about last Sunday's message. Because last Sunday's message has everything to do with this Sunday's message. You remember when I talked about how we encourage you get the whole world to represent. They say, see Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. You know, they get ready. All folks come out to church and they're ready to go. And, and man, it's a great it's a great expression of what Jesus done on the cross for us and the birth of Jesus. We all acknowledge that. And I said, soon later, we just forget about that. He is risen. He is risen to my point. Only half of us there, right? So he is risen. He is risen indeed. So it's hard to keep that concept, right? And I believe that the day's message is going to help us to always remember our part. We have a part. So last Sunday, we talked about the incorruptible love of Jesus has risen. I have given you all five biblical truths why I entitled that. He is risen because some folks don't know that he's actually risen. It's not a myth. It is factual. So one of the points we talked about that because he is risen, he will always stand the test of time. Yes. Went to the tomb no matter what's going on in our life. We talked about that. The other thing we talked about last Sunday, because he is risen, we will always, he will always help us to believe. Just like he had to meet Mary Magdalene. He had to go to the, you know, he met her outside the tomb. She started believing. The other thing we talked about was, Hey, the incorporate love of Jesus was meant to bring us peace with some of the disciples. They were back in the room. They were locked up. They were scared. And Jesus came and said, peace be with you. That's right, because he's risen, right? Now, the fourth thing we talked about, he would even help those in doubt. Because we had doubt in Thomas. Oftentimes, we doubt. I know we th try to th throw Thomas underneath the bus. The truth of the matter is what? Hey, man, he will meet you where you at. And the other thing we talked about last Sunday was because he is risen, guess what? There are other signs and wonders that were done that's not even recorded in the Bible. And I said, I can't wait to get to heaven because I want, to, I want the rest of it. I want to hear more of it, more of the stories. And so knowing that he's been trustworthy, honorable, and virtuous, we, we are in a place where we should remind ourselves not just wait to Easter Sunday to gear up to recognize who Jesus is, but as a lifestyle so we have a part to play in that. Is that even biblical, Pastor Rob? Yes, it is biblical. I'm going to show you that today. So let's just kind of look at the definitions of this. I think it's important. You ought to take a picture of that. And see, we need to have this conscientious thought, wishing to do what is right. Yeah. Because if we if we saying we going we need to love him ourselves, and we need to have an undying love for him. And I'm going to show you based on the word of God, we need to be meticulous about how we love Jesus. Yeah, very meticulous. In other words, instead of doing some things that you shouldn't do, you say, "Man, I'm going to do the things I I should do." Yeah. Sometimes it plays it plays a role in our thinking. Hmm. You know, I was at a restaurant and the waiter thought I paid. He said, oh, no, you good. For one moment, I was like, I am good. I don't have to pay. <laughs> oh, I got a witness up in here today. I got all kind of folks up in here today. Oh, my God. Y'all can relate to that, can you? Just that moment, I thought to myself, because the bill was $44. Man, I'm like, shit, I am good. I'm we all good. Even in that, they didn't even have a tip. Holy Spirit said, don't you do it. Because, because, because watch this, watch this. You start walking out the door, hey, 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 hey. Now, what, what's the problem? I'm calling the police on you. You know you didn't pay. No, 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 I can pay and I can tip you real good. These all kind of scenarios that went in my head. That fast, that just like that, just like that. She was like, huh, you remember this message that you're going to be preaching Sunday, don't you? See, see, look, look, we need this. I don't know about you all. I need to be, I need the word in me. Those little things and those little thoughts that happens, man, they're they for real, right? I need to be attentive, 
Do, do I really love Jesus or not? Am I just saying it? Because I'm telling you, life going to present itself, and you're going to be in a position that you're going to have to make a Jesus call. If you're married, you're going to have to make a Jesus call. If you're single, you're going to have to make a Jesus call. You're a manager, you're going to have to make a Jesus call. you got neighbors on each side of you that I'm talking about louder than anybody you know. When You can hear your neighbors when your windows are closed. Come on, somebody. you got to make a Jesus decision. Got to be undying, though. Lasting forever. I mean, we got to love God. We won't have to love Jesus when, guess what? When we get bad news. Why is it happening to me? We're going to have to love Jesus when at the end of the day, it just seems like everything that you have prayed for is just not coming to pass. Your kids ain't acting right. Your grandkids ain't acting right. Your teacher ain't acting right. Your friends ain't acting right. Your past ain't acting right. Come on, somebody. You got to love Jesus no matter what. It has to be enduring. Though. I'm talking about it has to last. How many of you all will walk away from the church just because somebody else walking away from the church? How many of us will stop reading our Bible because guess what? Your friends stop reading their Bible. You got to say Jesus Lord and he's Lord no matter what the temperature is, no matter how funny my money is, no matter if I'm dating or not dating, he has to be Lord if you're sick or not sick. He has to be Lord when you're going through times and it's testing. He has to be Lord when the people turn their back on you. He has to be Lord when you feel like he's not even there. He has to be. You have to convince yourself that he's Lord. God, I love you right now. So the Bible gets to tell us some things as Paul began to tell the church in Ephesus as he was wrapping it all up. And it's just perfect. Come on, somebody. Here's what the Bible goes on. The cheeks of the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord would tell you everything so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. Paul was saying, hey, I'm sending this man to you. He says, I'm sending him to you for this very purpose. Look at the purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with the what? Say it, y'all. Undying. Undying love. So I just didn't make this up. American Standard Version said it like this. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. With the what? Love incorruptible. I didn't make it up. We started this January the 6th, 2021. We ended it today. April the 16th, 2023. Last week was Easter Sunday. And I told you last week that I'm going to give you a reminder this Sunday that you'll never forget Easter Sunday ever again. Because if we can, if we can accept the fact that Jesus' love is going to last to the end of times in our life, if we can accept that, man, he's going to help us to believe, if we can accept he can move us out of our dark places, if we can accept there's more to him than we have read, we should also accept the word of God, how we ought to love him. Come on, somebody. So he goes on and he helps us to understand this. And I look at this passage and I'm telling you, I was dissecting this passage and I was looking at it. And there were five things that stood out to me that I wanted to share with you this morning. And I wanted to share these things so that you can see that when you look at the passage, you can see for yourself, man, the peace. He said, he'll leave you with some peace, brothers and sisters. Oh, my God. He won't leave us peace. He won't leave us peace. Peace to you, brothers and sisters. Tranquility to you. Calmness to you. Even in, even in a situation where you're not calm. He said, I'm going to take you to places where you can be calm. It's in me. 
It's not, it's not in what you can do or what you have got for yourself. It's who I am. It's what I'm doing. It's who I'm about. I'm speaking this over to your life. And this love, this love, this tenderness, this compassion, this intimacy. He said that in the word of God. He goes on and says, not even love, but even faith. Faith. This is being left. This is complete trust. Reliance. And you got to say, what am I relying on today? Who am I relying on today? And why am I relying on them? Well, I can tell you one reason why you can rely on Jesus. Because he's trustworthy. He's honorable. Come on, man. He died on the cross. He rose with all power. We can rely on him for real. And he has to be our hope. Because sometimes when the rubber beat the road and it feels like your hope is being pulled from you, you need that hope, man. That don't mean you're not going to go through it. That just means you got hope that you're going to come through it. The grace. Look at the passage, man. The grace. But, but, but when he went back, he says, not only that, what he says, he says, look, peace to the brothers and sisters, love and faith from God. Not from your situations, not from the people that's close from you. This is going to come from God. That means it's going to stand the test no matter what. This is from God, not only from God, he says, the Father. He didn't stop there. He says, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, look at here. We got a whole lot of good stuff coming for us right now and given to us. Verse 24, I want to remind us. Grace to all. Come on, somebody. Come on, man. Respect, consideration to all. Courtesy and goodwill to all. Thank you. Do you deserve it or not? That's not for me to judge. And I can't judge myself if I deserve it or not. And I found out something that Satan had me twined up. Satan had me. He had me saying words like this. You don't deserve nothing because of your behavior. You don't deserve nothing for thinking that way. You'll never make it. You're not good enough. You're not going to mount up to anything. Before I know it, I started believing that lie. And when I started believing that lie, I started drinking. Come on, somebody. I started smoking and I started snorting. Come on now. Somebody been lying to you. And only sometime, only time the way you can medicate yourself, you medicate yourself the wrong way. I'm here to tell you, man, there's some medicine that's in this passage right here, y'all. You start drinking love, peace, faith, and grace, and having an undying love, come on somebody. Because verse 24 says, grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you love them? I'm talking about the kind of love that says with the undying love. My God, boy, as I looked at this past, I'm like, look at here. Why? Why is it that the world we live in is the opposite of these words? The behavior patterns are the opposite of that. Why is that? And let me tell you why Elder Reggie, I done found out. Because we really don't know what love is. We know what like is. We really don't know what love is. Love is unconditional. Love is that I don't care what circumstances is. Love is what it is. I'm going to stay in there no matter what it is. Like say, because I don't like it, I ain't doing it no more. I don't like how this sounds. I'm closing this up. <laughs> I'm gone. Like would turn their back on you. Love would last forever. Come on, somebody. This is the love that the Bible is talking about. It's undying. It's forever. It's lasting forever. And it's okay. It's okay because we're learning together. We're learning God. Is, he's revealing some stuff. So, so what does undying love look like for the body of Christ today? And, and I'm going to show you all. And, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And if you embrace this, come on, somebody. You, and I'm telling you, you will be loving Jesus the way that the Bible said to love him. Come on now. Point number one. 
We will have unity and maturity in the body of Christ no matter what. Amen. This, is, this, is, this is the love, right? This is what we learn. And, and understanding this, you want to get the concepts of this because it's going to help. He says, as prisoners for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the call that you have received. This, we're talking about this undying love, what it looks like. I'm not talking about what we think it should be. I'm talking about what it looks like. It looks like those who are saying yes to Jesus Christ, I am a prisoner for the Lord. And then Paul said, I want you to live a life worthy of the calling of being saved. Be completely humble. Come on, somebody. But you got to be gentle. Watch this. Be patient. Bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. This is an undying love. I am telling you, you don't have to even try to search it out. I'm giving it to you. It's right here. We can be different. Even if somebody else is not different. He wants us to keep the unity and the maturity in the body of Christ. He don't want us fighting with each other. He want us to be united together. He want us to be completely humble. Listen, hey man, hey, hey I, I'm, I'm, my bad, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry and I need to be gentle with one another. And listen, let's be patient with each other. Hey man, because we need the patience, man. This is, this is, this is how we do life together. He said, come on now, let's bear with one another. Let's put up with each other. Because if we do that, we're loving Jesus the way that Jesus wants to be loved. And you know, I had to learn being married. I had to learn how to love my wife the way she wants to be loved. Not love her the way that I think she wants to be loved. Come on, somebody. I, I was loving her in the way to get my way. Come on now. I'm the only one in here. Okay, don't worry about that. I'm sure you do things to get your way. But we don't say it that way. We just say, I love you. Or we don't use the word manipulation. We don't manipulate the setup so that we know our return going to be exactly what we want. We just do it. But if you use the word, I'm manipulating you, you know what's going to happen. H-E <laughs> double hockey stick, double hockey, hop, hop, hockey stick going to happen. Come on, something going to happen. But the truth of the matter is, watch this. If you want to love Jesus the way that he wants to be loved, guess what? Everybody else is going to be loved the same way that Jesus loved them. He gives us something else that I think is important. He gives us instructions how to live to love him. Hey Amen. I, I like the idea that you get instructions how to love. I want to tell you how to love me. He said in Ephesians 4, 17, 19, so I tell you this. Not that, but this. And insist on it in the Lord. Paul said, I'm telling you something. I insist on this. Boy, that you must no longer live as Gentiles too. People who are unsaved. Come on, man. The way they think. They are darkened in their understanding because if you're not saved, he said you're darkened in your understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. Wow. See, at one time, Gentiles wasn't saved. They wasn't a people of God. They didn't have, they didn't have the faith of God. Now, when you say, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior, now that you are no longer a Gentile that's unsaved. Now you're with God and God is with you. I can't tell you how many times before I became a Christian, I said I'm saved and God is with me because I said it. It didn't mean nothing because I said it, but I believed it and I act just a fool all the time. And I was missing the mark of God the whole time. But see, my heart was heavy and, it was, and I walked in ignorance because I didn't know. I had lost all sensitivity based on the word of God. The Bible said they have given themselves over to sexuality. And guess what? And so to indulge in every kind of impurity and that they are full of greed. He said, listen, I'm going to teach y'all how to live. Because if you live the way I'm teaching you, you're loving me. Ain't that cool? 
It's not even a secret. It's not even a secret. He's telling you how he wants to be loved. He's landing out for the church. He's not landing out for non-Christians. He's telling the church this. He says, don't you worry about if you love me. All you got to do is do what I've given you. I guarantee you be loving me. What else did he say? I'm like, oh my God, he just keep going. He said in Ephesians 4, 29, 32, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Really? I'm done then. I might as well put a zip in my lip. But here's the deal. He says, listen, you can actually use your words to do something that is so powerful, but only what is the helpful for building others up according to what? Their needs. That it may benefit those who listen. This is what Paul is telling the church, telling the whole church how to love Jesus. He says, look, not only that, he says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed from the day of redemption. Thank you, Jesus. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Whew. Be kind and compassionate one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Isn't that not something here? I'm going to be teaching a series that's going to bless this church, going to bless the body of Christ and everyone. I'm about to teach something the next Sunday, start next Sunday, I'm going to teach you something to help us so that you understand you can get rid of some of the things that that's causing health issues in your life. See, everything that you see here, it causes health issues. You may not realize it, but it does. Bitterness if, it's, if it festers long enough, it's going to cause something in your life. Rage, anger, brawling. So it causes something. Malice causes something in our lives. Grieving the Holy Spirit causes diseases. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you got to hear me. Unforgiveness does it. Because all of these things happen, it's hard to be kind and compassionate to one another. I'm like, oh my God, as I sat down, the more and more I sat down, I, I just kept trying to understand. I used to want to know, how do I love God? How can I love God the way God want to be loved? And then these scriptures just unfolded for me. This revelation unfolded. This is it. Here's the other piece that I, I really understand. This is in Ephesians 5.1, it says, follow God's example. So you really mean, I, 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 I don't need other people's example, really. No, not really at all. If you, you, you follow his example, therefore, as dearly loved children, thank you, God, and walk in a way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. He is risen. You see, he gave himself up. So he gave himself up so that we can give back to how he gave to us through the vehicle of love. Not no other vehicle. But among you, there must be not even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity of greed because those are improper God's holy people. I thank God he's helping us. He's ministering to us. He's saying it's not a surprise that you may feel a certain way at a certain time about certain people. You're not weird. You're living. He said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to live this way. Because if you live this way, you won't get over. You won't give in to sexual immorality. You won't give in to all these other things. Because he says these are improper. And those improper for God's people, it's hard to love him. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, of course, joking, which are out of place. Some of my golfing buddies, years ago, I had to break them up from talking sexual, have sexual conversations around me. Like, listen, man, I'm not about that, bro. Now, you don't want me to preach to you. I definitely don't hear all that cussing about all this other stuff, sexual stuff. Can we get in agreement with that? We're in agreement. And when they start, I just walk on away because they forget their agreement. 
It's easy to get caught in other people's worlds. I'm not judging anybody, but I'm saying, I, I, I'm trying to love God the way you want to be loved. I want to love Jesus the way you want to be loved. Because if I'm loving him the way he want to be loved, then I'm not going to give in or fall for the things that feel natural for my simple nature to get that to me. I love to cuss. Come on, somebody. I'd like to cuss somebody off. I had an opportunity to cuss them out. Y'all say that y'all act like y'all had felt that way. Y'all, I know some of y'all still cursing. Now I got the whole church today, boy. I know it feel good. Uh-oh, I got an amen back there. <laughs> My God. There's some things we like doing. Because you have to think about this. If a God had to die for the things we like doing in our nature, how powerful is that? A God had to come down and die for our nature. Ain't that something? So you're not weird. Yes, it's a struggle. But if you want to overcome the struggle, you've got the keys to love God the way he want to be loved. This is it right here. As I start wrapping this up, he says, listen, watch this. Uh, look, look, this is verse 5. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolatry, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. I know sometimes it's hard to hear a message like this. But the message is for the body of Christ to show us how to love God. Not play like we love Him, but live like we love Him. You know, one of my friends told me this morning, I talked to one of my friends. I thought I was about to hang up Tracy from me. You know what he said to me? Give him heaven. I said, oh, I like that. He said, give him heaven. I said, man, I like that, man. I, I may put some words out there and say, give him heaven. I like that concept. Give them heaven. I can't give them nothing I don't believe in, though. Huh. So as he was telling us and showing us, and he was just saying, this is how we love, you know, Christian lifestyle. These are instructions for a Christian. But he also says, let me help you understand for those of you all, these, I'm going to give you some for your Christian household, how to love me too. Here it is. He says here, he's instructions for Christian households. Ephesians 5, 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Your households. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do for the Lord. And husband is the head of the house, is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, which is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, talking about all of us, so also wives should submit to their husband and everything. These are our households. This is the way our household is supposed to be run. This is how we love God when we submit. Y'all, we're loving God. We're loving Jesus in submission. You be like, you don't even know that husband I got. Or that wife, or these children, of these neighbors. You don't know them. Amen. God knows them. But God knows this. He knows that you heard a message on how he can be loved. So you're responsible for loving God because you came here today and you heard a message about what love really is and what love does. And Paul kind of wrapped it all up. He says, listen, now that you understand love, don't you forget how to put on your all your armor so that you can finally be strong in the Lord and my mighty power. He gave you some clothes to wear to be strong so when the devil comes. As he don't come, when it's going to be time for you to yield to all that stuff we just talked about, you need to be fully armored, clothed up, ready to go. You can't take your clothes off when it comes down your spiritual walk. You can't take them off, y'all. Because the minute we take them off, 
I guarantee you everything that we just read, we're susceptible of falling short of those things that he called us not to do. And yes, this is a pretty much hard teaching, but it's our reality. It's how he wants to be loved. And so there's two things I want to leave you with for application. You take them right here. Go ahead. You can write this down. All this means is to, you know, we're no longer living as pagans do. That's the bottom line. You don't want to live as an infidel, somebody who don't believe. That's, that's the way we love undyingly. This undying love for Jesus. We don't want to live that way. It means we need to take off our old clothes of greed, pride, and impurity and put away and put on the new garments of truth, righteousness, and holiness. This is, this is what it looks like here, brothers and sisters. And as I was putting this together, I didn't really necessarily want to teach this. You know, I like teach stuff, have everybody rah, rah, rah up and everything. Amen. Hey, it's hard to get an amen out of teaching like this, y'all. <laughs> but guess what? This, this is not hidden from us. It's in the word of God. This is what I taught for almost two years, y'all. I dissect this whole book of Ephesians. Starting January the 6th, 2021. I dissected everything that you read, I read today. Verse by verse, precept by precept. We understood that I got in I got in tune with exactly what God wants us to have. This is not about coming to church. It's about being the church. It's about being the church. And I meant every word to the men that they were up here this morning. I mean every word, man. We need to rise up and be the church that loves God the way he wants to be loved. I hope today was a message that you could wrap your heart around, that you will go back and you'll listen to it. It's on live right now. And those who are watching, this is a part of what God is doing in our lives. We're getting older Christians. We're older now. we older. It's time for us to be the one that teach the younger ones. At one time, we were the younger ones. I'll be 55 this year. Come on, somebody. Now, I know some of y'all already 65, saying you're still young. But I remember when I was 25. Now I'm going to be 55. That's old to me too now. Don't get me wrong. I'm getting old up. I'm not like you, mother part 90 yet. I'm not grown just yet. I'm getting there. But it's time for us to do the teaching by our lifestyle. You're watching by web, YouTube, and Twitter. I'm going to give this call of salvation. If you're here with us, and you're not saved. The Bible says Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. For it's with your heart you believe that you are justified. But it is with your mouth that you profess your faith. You got to profess that Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and he was rose on the third day with all power. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me, Father? Forgive me of my sins. I know that I have not had an undying love for Jesus. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. All my transgressions. And I believe that when he was buried, he laid in that grave for three days. But he come with all power. You rose him up, Lord. Father, I pray as he has given me this invitation that I will comply with him being Lord in my life and that I will learn to love him undyingly. 
this day and forevermore in Jesus name. Father, I want to pray for this congregation, those who are hearing me now, every sister, every brother. God, I want to pray for us, God. Pray for myself, God. God, forgive us, God, if we have had pagan tendencies. Forgive us, God, when we have walked the life of infidel, been an idolater, full of greed and pride and arrogance, impurity. God, forgive us. And God, I thank you that you're a loving God. I thank you, God, that you're a God that don't treat us as our sin deserve. But God, you help us to understand that there is an opportunity of repentance. God, we repent right now in the name of Jesus. We repent, God, for the shame and the shackles and the bondage. God, we repent, God, for the things that we have thought about and not even just thought about it, we act out on it. We're sorry, Lord. We're so sorry. But we want to thank you. You didn't leave us where we were at. You brought us from a mighty long way. And today, God, we declare the praises of your power in our lives that we will walk in truth, righteousness, and holiness. May you be glorified, God. May you be glorified, God. Thank you for teaching us how to love you through your word. Thank you for the instructions. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to see, God, that we're not alone. That you have given us a word to help us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming on in this place, having your way. May you order all of our steps and our stops. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Come on, give them a hand of praise, y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet as we get ready to leave this place. But now it's God's presence. We want to ask you all to consider. We want to give our gift today. Those of you all watching, I want you to go to www.rockaboutsalvation.com. Hit the donate button. I want you to give this morning. Or that some of you all be watching this evening. I want you to consider thinking about the way that you can help see this congregation as we gear up to hit these streets. For May the 3rd, we got so much going on. We look to do this almost 20 weeks every Wednesday. We want to provide resources and, and food and things of that nature for this community of Austin. We're looking forward to being on them corners. So we need your help. Come on, partner with us. Come on, I want you to really think about how you can be intentional financially with helping us. Thank you for your prayers. We thank you for watching us. We thank you for giving us opportunity to minister to you today. I'm Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. May God's blessings be upon you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I